good morning, everyone. I greet you all in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It truly is an honor and a privilege for me to stand here this morning. You know, my heart um, overflows with joy and gratitude when I look back at the past five and a half years of my life. I arrived on the mission on the 24th of December 2013. And when I arrived here, I was close to death's door. So I will share just shortly what, where I come from and, and what the Lord has done for me. My name is Wayne Strauss and I'm from Kimberley. Now, I was born into a Christian home. I had a mom who is a born-again Christian. Um, unfortunately, my dad was, he was an alcoholic. But my mom taught me Christian values from a very young age. From the time that I can remember that I could know what was right and wrong, I was taught the ways of Christ from my mom. And I was taken up by this, and at the age of six, I gave my life to the Lord, because that's what I wanted to do, and I wanted to please my mom. But the devil wasn't happy with that, and not long after that, I got introduced to pornography. And I did not go to my mom or to our duomini at that time. I kept, I hid that sin and it was allowed, I allowed the devil to come into my life through that. And I, very soon I started following the ways of the devil because I lied, I was sly, I started stealing when I didn't even need anything. But my mom never picked up anything because, as I said, I was sly. The devil taught me sly ways that I could hide all the sins from my mom. And in my teenage years, I started smoking cigarettes and I started drinking alcohol. And this soon escalated to the use of marijuana. And all through school, I could hide my sin. My, I, was, I was a good boy, so I could hide my sin from my, from my, fam, from my family. I was in church every Sunday. I was even a Sunday school teacher. I was in the youth every weekend. But I was living, sorry, a secret life of sin. 
ese sonto njalo i sonto ne sonto e fundisa u sonto skole ngumholi wabasha esifile goti son. And also at a very early age, I started living a immoral sexual life. But by the grace of God, I matriculated, but my drug use escalated and I moved on to harder drugs. And through all the years that I studied to become a teacher, my drug use escalated, but God was good to me. I could finish my, my teacher's education. And now I qualified in 1993 as a teacher. By 1998, why I say Julie leg in Pele, I say Julie in Pele, I say Julie in Pele, so, in 1998, I felt that I needed help, and I booked myself into a rehabilitation center. But in the rehab, you're allowed to smoke cigarettes, and they give you other types of drugs. So I was um, diagnosed as being manic depressive and I was put onto all sorts of antidepressants and mood stabilizers and all sorts of medication. So I spent two months in the rehab, but the same day that I was released, that night I went back to smoking crack cocaine. And two months after that, I attempted suicide for the first time. I slit my wrists and I ended up in the psychiatric ward of a hospital. And I spent about two weeks there after, and then I booked myself out there. Um, but I went back, after I came out there, I went back to my lifestyle, and it seemed that it just became worse. Now, many years of heartache and pain followed and drug abuse and sexual immoral, immoral lifestyle. I got estranged from my family because I blamed them for all the things that I was doing. However, I had a praying mother who not one day of her life did she stop praying for me. 
Nentanta wai no mama o kulegayo, onga zanga yege um kulegela, wai mkulegelo su no su. In 2002, I reunited with my family. Go nyaga 2002, wapinda o sanga nenum denuak. My granny was 98, I moved back to Kimberley. Galesos kati, ukoko wakewe ni mnyaga. I stopped using all hard drugs, but I still smoked cigarettes, I still smoked marijuana, and I still drank alcohol. And I did not allow the Lord into my life. And in 2004, I went back to my lifestyle. Once again, it seemed that my sins just became worse. It seemed like everything that I had been doing before had now become worse. And in 2008, after another short stint in a rehabilitation center, in 2008, I attempted suicide again. I drank. All the pills that had been prescribed to me, I drank with a bottle of alcohol. I woke up in a hospital. I was tied to a bed. I had all sorts of machinery attached to me. And I heard that my heart had stopped while they pumped my stomach. My mom spoke to me and tried to convince me that this is the turning point in my life. I need to change my life, that God has a plan for me. I agreed with her to a point, but I still, I was, I was caught up and I could not get rid of this lifestyle. I couldn't stop using drugs. And it wasn't long when I went back to my lifestyle again. I, I cried and I prayed many nights and I asked the Lord to help me, but it was if, as if nothing was going right for me. I... I started teaching again, and again, once I had money, it just, it just went from bad to worse. But again, I must say that not one day my mother stopped praying. And every opportunity that she got, she spoke to me about the Lord and that I need to change my life. And as far as I was concerned, I knew all the answers and I, I know that I will get a chance. However, in 2013, everything spiraled out of control for me. No, 2013, is in Sunday food. The previous year, 2012, my mom had sold the house that we were living in because she wasn't feeling safe with me 
was just her and I in the house anymore. Go 2012, mama wa ke waita isagi nta ba besala gu yongo ba ebon taka sa pepele ma beseli nta o nye besel boba bilugleyo. It was also that year that, for the first time in all my years of drug abuse, that I was asked to leave a job because of my drug use. I felt that I was the biggest failure in the world. I again blamed my family for everything that I was going through. And I decided that I'm going, to, I'm going to have a third attempt at my life. And in my heart, I told myself, third time lucky, this time it will work. And I got myself enough sleeping pills. And my plan was to take the pills on the 24th of December 2013 so that forever for the rest of my family's lives they will remember Christmas Day that I had killed myself because of them. And However, the Lord intervened in a miraculous way. A few days before Christmas, I ended up being with my mom. She showed me a letter in a Joy magazine of a young man who had come to Kwasizabantu Mission for Help. And my eyes opened up that day. And the 24th of December 2013, I arrived at Kwasizabantu Mission. That was the day that this prodigal son returned home. I got here and I was told that actually that night, that first night, sitting up there, I, I made my life right with the Lord. And the next day we started our services um, at, with uh, Sipsa. And then Ten o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the afternoon. And I heard about confessing your sins. Now, for me, that was, I felt that why should I confess my sins to a person? Why must I sit there and talk about it? when I can just go to the Lord myself. So for the first three or four days, I sat there, but I, I battled with this issue of having to confess my sins when I can go to the Lord myself. Well, on the fourth day, I couldn't anymore, and I went to one of the ladies, Tani Esther, and I said, tell me where in the Bible it says that I have to confess my sins to you. And she smiled at me, and she said to me, James 5 verse 16 says, confess your sins one to another 
wa mama theka udani Esther wa sethi umufundi Bible encwadi encwadini ka Jacob isahluko sehlanu indima ye 12 pha lithi vumani izono omunye komunye Well I just overflowed from there onwards Sugela lapho ke kwaphuphuma enhlizweni yami And she had to go away in a few da- and a few days later I started with another counselor with Auntie Jenny and you know, I felt that I was not going to have enough time to confess all the sins that I've done over all the years. So every time I went there, it was like verbal diarrhea. It was just coming out all the time. The Lord reminded me of things that I had forgotten about and I could bring to him and lay at his feet. The weight that I had on my shoulders wasn't there anymore. And it wasn't long after that when the Lord opened a door for me and I could help in the office of Sipsa. Today, I'm truly blessed to be part of the teaching staff at Domino Savite. Now, there were many out there who tried to help me, many psychiatrists, many doctors. But they couldn't help me because they didn't have the Lord. But yeah, at Kwasi Zabantu Mission at, and at the Concerned Young People of South Africa. Yeah, I got the help that I needed all the years. And here at Kwasi Zabantu Mission, they are still Hundreds of young men being helped every day. I'm truly honored that I can say thank you to Reverend Stegan being here this morning for his obedience to the Lord and starting this place. I thank Antumkulu for her obedience as well for starting the organization concerned young people of South Africa. And this morning I give all the glory and honor to the Lord for what he has done in my life. To all those who've had an impact in my life with the changes that have, that have been done in me and that have been wrought by the Lord, I say thank you to you. And I thank you that I could share that with you this morning. Thank you.